Hi, Christine. So I want to introduce Christine. Christine Harrison is a licensed marriage and family therapist, and she works with kids ages four up to 17 and has tackled many digital wellness issues in her practice. So hi, Christine. Hi, thank you. So we're going to start with um, defining tech addiction, which sounds a little bit scary. So maybe another way um, to frame it would be children that are showing signs of dopamine overload, maybe to soften it a little bit. But um, maybe we can start with what are the signs of tech addiction? How do you know as a mom or, or dad whether something like video games or social media are actually, uh, if your child's actually so showing signs of addiction, what are those signs? Okay, um, they are actually very similar to the signs of addiction to anything else. Um, although there are mostly, I look for mostly three main signs. Um, the first one is if you notice that your child is thinking about or planning their next use, where they're constantly asking like, can I play after dinner? Can I play after homework? Can I play after school? Can I play on Sunday morning? Um, they're just constantly planning their next use and working their own schedule around their use as well. Um, another sign is a lack of interest in other people and other activities that maybe they used to be interested in before they started any kind of tech use. A lack of interest unless the object of addiction is present. So they will socialize with friends as long as they're playing their favorite video game. Um, adolescents and teens will talk to their other friends as long as they are on some kind of chat something like with their if they're playing with TikTok or they're playing with Instagram or whatever that that's when they actually show interest in friends and other activities is when this tech is also involved um, and the third sign the third biggest sign is really irritability restlessness and a lack of focus on other things focusing mostly, again, going back to the first point of planning their next use. Mm -hmm. And then, I um, mean, just to my own personal experience, those are all great um, identifiers. Uh, what about, you know, the element, which I hear a lot from other parents of removing whatever it is, you know, um, saying it's time to be done with the iPad, it's time to turn off the video games. Is that, um, is the child's reaction in those moments is that telling or is that just um, is that not related as much? It, it definitely can be just like any other. I hate to say it this way, but any other drug addict, you know, like you have to quit the pot or you have to get off cocaine or you have to stop shopping or you have to stop gambling. It's like, no, 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 just one more, one more, one more. And I swear I'm done and then wake up the next day and they're right back to it. And, and tech is no different. It really is no different. OK, yeah. Um, and then maybe we can get into types of media as well, because, you know, when I talk to my kids about this, it's not, it's not about the screens. It's about what's happening on there. Right. Yes. It's like, yes. Uh, when you eat something, when you eat sugar, it's very different than when you're eating broccoli. Right. And we talk about, Correct. um, healthy games and junk games, and it doesn't mean we're not going to do the junk games, but you know, it's, to me, it's a, it's a good metaphor. So maybe you can speak to a little bit. Um, what types of media that you think are the most addictive? Okay, well, the main one is definitely where there is no clear stopping point. Um, there's no leveling. Um, it's not about whether or not there's le it's learning or like a first person shooter type game. The point is, is that when there is no leveling and no clear stopping point, it doesn't allow kids to figure out when to stop. They just, they're just wandering around things like in a metaverse and things like TikTok and things like Instagram, there are no, there's no leveling, there's no clear stopping point. Um, another thing is, is if any kind of app has, or a game or something has, like an element of the fear of missing out. Um, definitely these are the adolescents and the teens, some of the younger kids as well, but it's all about like recognizing whether or not you collected the newest costume in something like Roblox right? Whether you collected the newest costume or did you see this or did you see that? And for adolescents, definitely on, on TikTok and Instagram and sharing videos and resending videos to each other and mirroring videos, it's like, oh, did you see so-and-so's video? And mm -hmm. the fear of missing out is a huge motivator 
right? To keep them online constantly so that they don't miss anything. And the third most important point really is any kind of game or app or something that gives a constant ongoing hits of dopamine like every couple minutes. And the reason why things like TikTok and Instagram, as well as things like Roblox are so addictive is because with the social media part of it, there's the constant like ding to hear likes or a reply or a reposting or some kind of comment or the fact that somebody saw it or when somebody, you get a new follower. And in things like Roblox, it's constant little new rooms to discover. And even though the discovery may not be that big, the hit of dopamine is what keeps the kids online constantly, constantly. So it's, again, it's just, it's a constant influx of dopamine, the fear of missing out and anything that does not have a clear stopping point. Yeah. And unfortunately, as a mom, what's challenging is some of those platforms you mentioned happen to be the most popular as well. You know, so all the kids are talking about. Yes. And there's a reason why they're the most popular, because that's what the kids are on all the time. You know, like a learning game, some kind of puzzle game or maybe a card game or something, you know, I don't know, even something like fishdom, you know, like the little games that are there's a clear stopping point because they're leveled. And so those aren't as popular because they don't give as much dopamine. They still do give dopamine, Mm -hmm. right? But it's not like something that a kid is going to play or even an adolescent or a teen is going to play for hours on end. Maybe the first time that they ever discover it, they might actually play it for several hours, but it's not something they're going to keep going back to day after day after day. They're not thinking about fishdom right after homework. Right. They're thinking yeah. about Instagram. They're thinking about TikTok. They're thinking about Roblox. They're thinking about those things where all my friends are on there and I have to get on as well. Yeah. And I think a good hint as a parent, I mean, this is pretty obvious, but maybe not. We have an old school Pac-Man machine in our playroom and, yeah. you know, it stays on over the weekend and they know they can go to it. They can go to it and they can walk away from it. You know, this mm-hmm. does not happen in any of those platforms that you've talked about. Never, ever, ever has my son walked away. I know, I know we're talking about video games a lot because we're mm-hmm. um, maybe focused on younger kids, you know, similar mm-hmm. to social platforms as you get older. But, um, but yeah, that would be an easy tell as a parent. Um, can my child just walk away with, from this on their own? Or mm-hmm. um, if I ask them to or, or say it's time to be done? Or is it mm-hmm. a struggle? I think that's a good tell probably based on what yes. you're saying. Yes. And of course, if the kid still has like one Pac-Man left, it's going to be a fair thing of like, okay, this is your last guy. And as soon as your last guy is gone, then we don't put another quarter. We don't press start again. Right. They may want to, but again, clear stopping point. Right. And even people like you and I may have hung out in arcades for hours and hours on end. When it was 530, we would look at our watch and go, okay, you know, or when we were out of quarters, that was it. You know, we weren't really totally addicted. It was fun. But once we were out of quarters, that was the stopping point. Time to go home. Right. Yeah. No big deal. Maybe we could yeah. come back tomorrow, maybe. Right. But with these games, they're just it's constant. It's just constant. No stopping points. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, so I think one of the most important questions maybe in this um, topic we're talking about today is, what, what can you do if you think your child is showing these yes. signs of addiction, you know, maybe yes. identified it. Okay. What do you do now? Yeah. So the first thing definitely obviously is to talk to them and tell them actually what is going on. Um, the hard part about this, the second part is to remember that they absolutely will resist. Um, the younger the kid, the probably the more resistance there will be uh, because the understanding they, there will be denial just like any other drug addict. You know, it's not that bad. That's not true. That doesn't make sense. That's not what's happening to me. I'm not that guy. You know, I'm not addicted. I can stop. I just want to play. Right. So just so definitely talk to them, tell them what is happening with the dopamine hits and that it is like a drug and there or you know, a gambling addiction or a food addiction or an exercise addiction, any other addiction. No. Remember that they absolutely will resist and know that you as a parent do have the power to cut them off when you need to, right? And um, the older the kid, like usually around 11, a a mature 10-year-old or like typically an 11-year-old, you can actually negotiate 
um, use and, and monitor that. And if they are able to keep their half of the negotiation, then the use it will be okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. negotiation with a kid, I'm assuming most parents would say, as long as your homework is done, as long as your chores are done, you know, as long as you're keeping your grades up, as long as you're not showing any other sign, as long as you're not staying up until two o'clock in the morning sneaking, you can, you know, we'll work on how much, how much use you can use like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that, um, you know, part of the whole mission, um, I should have mentioned you were one of the original founders of this uh, dopamine concept, but one of yes. our original missions was how do we explain this complicated stuff to kids so that they can make good choices? So maybe a last follow-up question would be, how do you explain this very simply? What's happening to their brain? I mean, for me, for me, I use the sugar metaphor sometimes, right? Like you don't want to have ice cream in the morning because vegetables aren't going to taste good later. Um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's the teeter totter, which, um, the author of Dopamine Nation explains, right, where you're feeling maybe a little bit, it's the pleasure and pain, pain principle, you're feeling sad, and you want the games of the social to make you uh, feel happy. But what happens is the teeter-totter goes back further and you need more of it. So those are the, the metaphors I've used. But I don't know, maybe a last question would be how you would explain this to a child if, if this was happening to them. And I know it depends on the age, but it does. It does. And it depends on the child and what, what they already understand. Um, and again, mm -hmm. also keeping in mind, remembering that they will resist. Right. So the, I would start really basically by telling, by talking about dopamine and that it's a chemical in the brain that makes us feel good that, um, that we get a rush of it when we have discovered something new, when we have, learn something new um, when we are included in a social group and it's a feel good drug. And that is what we're after. And when we have too many video games and constant influx of dopamine, we're going to need more and more and more dopamine to feel good. And that's where you were talking about the whole teeter totter, right? That if you're feeling good mm -hmm. constantly on these video games for hours and hours and hours on end with constant like little hits of dopamine, um, then once you're off the game, you actually feel worse than you would have if you didn't play the game at all, or if you weren't on Instagram at all, or you didn't see any TikTok videos, right? Mm -hmm. And so to be able to explain to kids, like, this makes you feel really good for a short period of time, and the follow-up is really bad. And I would also include in the explanation to kids that typically you're going to stop enjoying any other normal things in life the way that you used to. You're not going to mm -hmm. enjoy taking a shower. You're not going to enjoy eating. You're not going to enjoy playing outside with your friends. You're not going to enjoy, you know, being with your family. You're, you're, you know, that, that every day cannot be Disneyland. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I mean, it's, yeah. again, it's hard because the really, really young kids may not eat like the moment you say dopamine, they may not really understand that. So you would also have to explain like what that is. That literally it's a feel good yeah. drug. Yeah. I mean, I think to me, this goes back to this name it to tame it idea, right? Um, when you name things, even if it's something like dopamine where, where they might not know um, mm -hmm. and then follow up with an explanation, like what you're, you're saying, um, yes. I think it's kind of calming to kids, right? Like they understand, okay, this is something um, normal yeah. that can happen to my brain and okay, no big deal. We're going to fix this and, and move on. Right. Where, um, we hope they, <laughs> they didn't understand why they were freaking out when, mm -hmm. you know, you put away the iPad. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I just think knowledge is, is power for kids and they're smarter I than, agree. than we think. Yeah, I fully agree. Right, well, I fully agree. I really appreciate your insight on this and, um, thank, thank you. you so much for your time. Not a problem. Thanks.